Hey everyone, today I will be talking about cross-polarization. What is it? How does it even work? Do you really need it? Why do you need a filter for that? So if you're interested in good scans, stay tuned. Now before we talk about cross-polarization, let me say this is a really powerful tool. If you want the best scans, make sure you invest in a good flash, in a good polarizer for the flash and in good polarizers for your lens. And how does cross-polarization work? Well, basically it's just sunglasses for your lens and for your flash. A better and more accurate answer would be you rotate both filters, they meet at some point and if they meet they will cancel out a lot of the light. But you will still have enough light to be able to scan. The benefits are sharper images, less reflections, more accurate colors. So there are good things and there are obviously some bad things. First would be the cost. You need to invest in this. You need the flash and you need the polarizers. The second one would be you need to readjust at some point because if you just move the filter a little bit the polarization is off again. The third one would be you need a lot of light. The flash can one hot at some point, it depends on what you are scanning. The darker the object is, the more light you need, the hotter the flash can get in a shorter amount of time. But enough talking, let's jump over to the camera and I'll show you some examples. So let's go over some examples real quick. So this is a normal picture that's shot with my camera. You can still see the flash, but there is no polarizer on the wing. There is still some polarizer on the lens, but it's adjusted to zero. So basically it's not affecting the image. Maybe a little bit, but it's not really a thing. If we now switch over to the same picture, but polarized, you can see it's a lot darker. You can also see the blue, the dark blue, purple. It depends on the polarizer and the flash you are using. But yeah, you can see the blue light in the mirror. By the way, that's how I calibrate my flash and my lens. I just have a small mirror or I do it at home at the big mirror and polarize it until everything is blue in the mirror. Then you know you hit the magic spot and everything looks a bit flat and really, I think, really saturated. But that's the look you want. So let's put them together real quick to compare them. So here we have the comparison. On the left, the normal picture, on the right is the polarized version of it. Same picture, but looks way different. Let's check out another example real quick. Here we have a spray can. On the right, we have the normal version, straight camera picture. And on the left, we have the polarized version. I think it's pretty obvious what's going on here. On the left, we basically have no information of highlights, reflections, anything related to that. Well, if you look closely, there's always some left because a polarizer is removing light, yeah, but it's not killing all the light in existence. We still need a little bit, we need certain wavelengths to go through the polarizer to make this look happen. On the right, we can see looks like a shiny spray can, I would say. But if you look at the leaves here, that's really interesting. As you can see, that's the same leaf. On the left, it's really flat. On the right, it's quite shiny. And that's the look you want to get with the polarizer. You get flat information of colors. Well, almost flat information of color. Why is that any useful? Why is that good? Because in engine, we can add our own information. So that's why flat albedo maps are very useful and that's why you need cross polarization if you want to get accurate scans. So there you have it. That's how cross polarization works. Are you interested in cross polarization? Do you want to upgrade your gear for that maybe? Let me know down below in the comments. Well, I hope you learned something today. If so, that's good. Consider subscribing and well, now you have some free time. Maybe you should check out this video here.